What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Richard on Data. And if this is your first time here, my name is Richard, and this is a channel where we talk about all things data, data science, statistics, and programming. So subscribe for all kinds of content just like this if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so YouTube notifies you whenever I upload a video. So this is going to be the third video in my Julia tutorial series. Now in the first video, we covered how to download and install Julia and get set up in an environment that's going to work for you. And then in the second tutorial, we covered how to use the data frames package just to manipulate and transform your data, just to get it into a nice, clean and usable format so you can take that data set and do something more exciting with. Well now in this tutorial, we're going to do something more exciting with that data, specifically visualizations. Now, there's a lot of different packages in Julia for visualization. There's Plots, that's the most popular one. There's Gadfly, which is a slightly more mature one than that. But then my personal favorite is Vega Light. Just from my own experiences, at least at the time I'm recording this video, that's October of 2020, I just found Vega Light to be the most mature, the most flexible. Uh, it's super powerful. It reminds me a lot of the capabilities you can do with like ggplot2 from R. So it's my favorite and it's going to be the one that I recommend you guys use as well. Now before we get into this tutorial, just a few asks from you guys. Number one, please smash the like button to this video. It just takes half a second of your time and it really helps my content reach a larger audience. Then also, if you guys would be willing to support me on Patreon, I do have a link to that in the description of this video. So if you guys are willing to do that, it would mean the world to me. Also with this script, as always, that's going to be available on my GitHub repo, also in the video description. Now, there are a few links in here that you guys may find helpful. Number one is the link to the Vega Light documentation. It's fantastic, and I highly recommend reading that even after watching this tutorial. And specifically, I do highly recommend learning how, on the back end, Julia kind of converts between the JSON specification of Vega and Vega Light into a format that's readable by the VL plot macro. Because once you understand that, you can just Google certain things with Vega Lite, and sometimes you're going to see things that comes back in this JSON specification. And once you understand how to go back and forth between one and the other, it'll be much easier for you to write code from scratch. Then there are certain things that I just am not going to be able to cover throughout this video, specifically all the different marks and configs out there. So I'm going to have uh, links to those here as well. All right, so now let's get started. So like any other Julia package, you're going to start by importing PKG. That's Julia's package manager. And then you're gonna run pkg.add Vega Lite. Then at that point, this is going to be just like my tutorial on data frames, if you've seen that one first. I'm gonna bring in our data sets, because that's where the data set I'm gonna be using for this tutorial is gonna come from. Data frames I'm gonna bring in. And then we're gonna bring in Vega Light as well. And now the data set that I'm gonna use here, again, that comes from R. Specifically, it's the MPG data set from the ggplot2 package from R. So if you've seen my tutorial on ggplot2 in R, I'm going to walk through basically the exact same steps with the same data set that I did there. So if we just use the describe function from data frames just to get a feel for this data, we get all the variables in the data set as well as mean, minimum, median, maximum, number of unique values and the number of missing values there. So now let's create our first Vega light plot. Now I'm gonna take this chunk of code here and break down every piece of this. We start from our MPG data frame then think of this piece here as just like a pipe operator. So we start from the data frame, then we pipe it to this functionality. Now Vega Light operates through the at VL plot macro, and there is a subtle difference between a macro and a function. I'll have a link in the description of this video to a great Reddit thread that breaks down the distinction between a macro and a function. But for now, just remember our key macro here is this at VL plot thing. And then on the inside, this operates just like a basic grammar of graphics functionality. 
So the objects that we're using here are called marks, and that's going to be our first, uh, our first argument. So the mark that we're using here is a point because we just want to create a simple scatter plot here. So a point is a type of mark. The next things that we're going to specify are the x and the y variable. The x variable is the uh, displacement or DISPL variable. And then the y variable is the highway miles per gallon or HWY. We can specify the width and the height of the plot object and then would you look at that? We have a pretty decent looking uh, Vega Light plot object here. So we've created this really basic scatter plot and it's got this basic blue color going on here. But maybe we want to take this to the next level and make these points red instead of blue. Well at a high level, notice here all we did was specify one argument. Mark equals point, x equals displacement, so on and so forth. Well, for each and every single one of these arguments, we can specify multiple components to these arguments by using braces, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. So what do I mean by that? So instead of specifying mark equals point, we can allow for multiple different arguments to this argument by setting these braces up. So instead of doing mark equals point, we're going to do mark equals, and then in braces, point, comma, color equals red. We do that, and we get this slightly nicer looking scatter plot where the points are red instead of blue. So we're going to see many, many more examples of this as we go through. But first, rather than just make these points all one straightforward color, maybe we want to map the color to another variable. So let me show you how to do that. So one thing to know up front, if you're mapping something to a categorical variable, you want to specify whether you have a nominal or an ordinal categorical variable. For those of you unfamiliar, a nominal variable means the levels aren't in any particular kind of order, but with an ordinal variable, yeah, there is some kind of inherent order to the levels. So let's take our class variable, for instance. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead actually here to looking at the final plot, but if you look at the classes here, like two-seater, compact, mid-size, so on and so forth, there's no real inherent order to that. It's a nominal variable. Now how you encode that is you include this colon n to the end of the variable. So what is this going to look like? We specify mark equals point, x equals displacement, and y equals highway, just like we did before. But then we're going to make a new color argument to, at VLplot. What we're going to do here is just put it in quotes, and we're going to do class colon n at the end. The colon n specifies, specifies that we have a nominal variable. And then look at that. It's looking really fancy. The color is mapped to this class variable. If we look then at how Julia and Vega Light are going to handle uh, ordinal variables, here's another example. So same kind of thing as before, except instead of uh, ending with the suffix colon n, we're going to end with colon o. Now I did add a shape argument here too, just to show you that there's other mappings that you can do and other configurations to the plot that you can change. Now, I specified CYL variable as nominal to shape. It doesn't really matter, but if you specify ordinal to shape, Julia's is going to throw a warning message at you, but again, it doesn't really matter. We're going to do that, and then as far as the color is, is concerned, Julia is going to throw a different color spectrum or almost like a different transparency at you for the shades of blue here. And then notice that I have circle, square, triangle, and, uh, and pluses here for the different uh, values of the CYL variable. So again, Vega Light, very customizable, very flexible, lots of different things that you can change. Now so far everything we've been working with are scatter plots, so let's move on to another type of visualization which is the column or bar chart. So a few things to break down in this chunk of code here. First of all we're going to change mark equals point to mark equals bar. Uh, 
And then unless you're working with data that are pre-aggregated, you need to specify some kind of aggregation function uh, to either your Y or to your X. Because all I want to do here are return the counts for the class variable, my aggregation function is going to be Y equals count and then in parentheses. All these aggregation functions you can use are specified in the Vega Lite documentation. Now to the color argument, I want to map this class variable as well. So I want every column here to be a different color. And now Vega Lite is going to allow us to specify our, uh, our scale or our range of different colors manually. I'm going to do this here. Julia is going to understand most uh, names of colors that you feed it, but then if you want to look up hex codes, that's obviously something that you can do as well. Then if we take a look at this uh, visualization, it's looking pretty colorful. Like I said, every column is going to be a different color. And this, just like everything else, is incredibly flexible. So let's take a look at another example. So in this case, I'm gonna do a bar chart instead of a column chart by putting on the y-axis the variable I'm interested in and then on the x-axis the aggregation function. Now in the previous example, I was mapping that same variable that was getting aggregated to the color argument, but instead I'm gonna pass a different variable to the color argument. I'm going to pass the CYL or cylinder variable to the color argument. So what I end up with here is a stacked bar chart. The colors correspond to different values of the CYL variable. And then as we go across this x-axis, we have the count of, uh, of records for each of these different uh, values of the class variable. So again, a stacked bar chart. Now I'm going to show you another example with the mark equals bar. And this is actually an instance where Vega Lite is going to differ a lot from like ggplot2 and R. If we want to build a histogram, there's not a special uh, mark for that. We're still going to use mark equals bar. One very important thing that we have to do though is under this X argument here, we have to specify when we create our braces that bin equals true. So make sure you include bin equals true, keep mark equals uh, bar, and in this case here, I just want a green uh, colored histogram, so I'm going to pass the color uh, to the mark argument. And then, would you look at that? We have, a, we have ourselves a scatter plot. Looks pretty good, not a whole lot more to say about this. It's pretty straightforward, right? The last object that I'm gonna show you how to create is a box plot. So hopefully now you have the hang of this, but in Mark, we're going to specify box plot. And now there's actually a couple different kinds of these that you can create depending on where you wanna draw the minimum and the maximum uh, lines here. You can have them drawn to the minimum and the maximum. Some box plots are styled to where they go to the first quartile and the third quartile. And there's a two key version that you can specify under the extent here. But for this example, we're going to specify extent equals min uh, dash max. So under the X and Y here, you actually do have to put these in quotes. Otherwise, uh, it's going to freak out and not recognize what you're doing. But Again, we do the mark equals box plot here. Then we get some pretty decent looking box plots. Now we're gonna tweak this a little bit with a few uh, customizations. So starting from the same code that we had before, we're going to add a transform piece here. This is another thing Vega Lite is going to allow us to do. Now what we're going to do is transform the source data going in here so that the CYL variable does not equal five. There's the syntax here that you have to specify datum dot up front. And because there's no data under the case where CYL equals five, I want the case in which CYL does not equal five. So we're going to do that inside uh, brackets rather than braces here. And then under column, I'm going to specify the CYL variable because I want to create different facets here for this class variable and visualizing the distribution of city miles per gallon broken down for different facets of the CYL variable. Now one thing I am going to do is make the width here a little bit smaller so that we can see each of these plots and then look at that. Again, for those of you who are familiar with the 
uh, GG Plot 2 package in R. It's just like I'm doing a facet wrap, and it looks just about as good, I think. Now we're going to do one final plot for this tutorial, and there's going to be a lot going on here. And this is where we're going to throw everything at the VL plot macro, just to give you an idea of everything that we're going to be able to tweak. So, let's start from top to bottom. We're going to run the VL plot macro with mark equals bar. And what we're going to do inside the X argument is, for the axis, we want the values to be at a 30 degree angle. Let's scroll down a little bit to show you what that looks like. Take a look at that. The values, we're putting them at an angle. All right, like before, we're doing a count for our aggregation. Then we're gonna give this plot a title. That title is gonna be records by class. Just like before, color, the class variable is going to be mapped to the color argument. We're going to manually specify the range of colors manually spell all those out just like we did before and then for our marks here or our objects maybe we want to make them a little bit more transparent we can do that using the opacity uh, argument so we're going to give that uh, a value of 0.7 the scale there is obviously 0 to 1 then we get into this config argument so there's tons and tons of things that you can pass to this, more than I can get into in this video, and all that is laid out in the, uh, in the documentation. But let me give you an idea of some of the things that we can do here. So first of all, to this title piece here, we're going to make the title blue, and we're going to give it the font uh, Times New Roman. This is fairly flexible as far as the fonts are concerned. I've played around with this and some things it's not going to recognize, but Times New Roman, everything is going to recognize. For the legend, I don't want a title to that, so I'm going to specify title equals nothing. Now we get this axis thing here, and then what we're going to do here by specifying grid equals false is we're going to get rid of all these axis lines which run along the panel or the background of the plot. So just to show you a quick comparison, up here we've got all these lines going on here. For our visualization here, we don't want that. The last few things I'm going to do here are for the overall border of our plot, we're going to specify that with the stroke. We'll give it a black border, and then we'll make it a little bit thicker by specifying stroke width to equal two. And then would you look at that? There's a lot that I did to that plot, and I configured it to essentially my personal heart's content, and there's tons and tons of different things that you can experiment with too. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. And in this video, we covered a lot of different things. We created scatter plots, column and bar charts. We created box plots, and then we created facets for them. And then we used all these different configurations to make our graph look a lot different. But my real goal here was kind of to teach you how to fish. It was to show you how you can set up different parameters to the VL plot macro so that hopefully you can go out there, read the documentation, figure out all the different things that you can do inside the VL plot macro, all the different plots you can create. And that way, suppose you're Googling things and looking around, you find something that's written using the uh, using the JSON specification. Maybe you want to emulate that using uh, the Julia at VLplot macro. Hopefully, you can read that stuff out there and recreate that exact same plot inside of Julia. So thanks to all of you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, uh, please consider sharing this video. And also, leave me a comment down below and let me know how your uh, Julia experience has worked out for you so far. Then I'll see you all in the not-so-distant future. Until then, Richard, on data.